front shoulder, right in front of the front shoulder. Just waiting on you, princess, whenever you're ready. Got all your snacks? Yeah. Any pillow or anything? No, I'm good. You good? Yeah. Well, it's day two of youth rifle season here in Oklahoma, and Emily is still looking for a buck. She didn't have any luck last night. She hunted with her Uncle Dusty. But here's the problem. Emily's biggest hunting competition, because she's pretty competitive, Nick, her good friend, Nick McGill, killed that 14 point buck yesterday, opening morning of youth rifle season. And he shot a doe last night. And he harvested a doe last, yesterday, last night. So, Emily's in a pickle. Yeah. She's, uh, she's got a standard to live up to, because Nick has never beaten her, not, in one single year, she's killed a bigger deer than him every year. Yeah. But the thing is, is Emily's killed some giant deer. It's going to be hard to top the one you killed last year. I know. It's possible. I'm not going to say it's not going to happen, but uh, the standard is set way high. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go see what we can do. in the morning it's probably about Emily's first nap time yeah. she's taking a nap about 6 30 7 30 probably 8 15 yeah yeah all right well good luck <laughs> thanks
let him turn a little bit. Yeah, I'm on him. Hang on. You can shoot the front shoulder, right in front of the front shoulder. Emily, I can't see you because of the sun. It's uh, Emily's not sure what to do when she shoots and the deer doesn't drop. I think the last two bucks and the elk that she shot all dropped in their all, tracks. All of mine have dropped besides my first one. Yep. But I think she made a good shot on that buck. I mean, he's only 30 yards out there. And that's a real wide eight point that we've been getting lots of pictures of. Matter of fact, that was the one that Houston was hoping to see. <laughs> But uh, he came out this morning in front of the wrong girl, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My legs are like marshmallows. Why? Because the pants are big. Oh. But, but they're, they're comfy. Job. Don't go too fast. Go to where you last see blood. Are you on the trail? Yeah. Tree. Oh my goodness, don't get me so excited. Hey, hey, hey! Good dogs. Good dogs, yeah! Good dogs. Hey, y'all drove right past him. Bella, good girl, good girl. Hey, Gemma, good puppy dog. Good dog, Gemma. Yeah, good girl. Oh my gosh. Gemma found it. Gemma, quick. Oh, yeah, he's a nice one. Good girl. He's nice and thick. That's a nice eight. Oh, Uber tracker. Hey. So tell us the story, Emily. What happened? Uh, we were tracking the blood. We were tracking the blood. And then it stopped. So we got Bella and Gemma. Who did? Who got Bella and Gemma? They got Bella and Gemma. And Bella was finding all the blood. And then she found some over there. So we were following her. And then Gemma started barking. And so we followed Gemma. Let me back this up a little bit. I'm not wearing a hat because I left it on the blood trail. So Emily shoots this deer. We let it sit for about 30 minutes or so. And I watched on video exactly where it went into the trees. There was no blood trail from where she shot for about 50 yards. And once he got in the trees, he started bleeding a little bit and it picked up and picked up and picked up. And Emily and I lost the blood trail in that tall grass, didn't we? Yeah. So I marked the last blood with my hat and we looked and looked and looked and looked. And finally I called DJ and said, hey, send Houston over here with Bella and Gemma, huh? Hey, that that 
the size of that is almost mine. <laughs> so I had you bring the dogs because Bella has helped me track deer before. Now I'm not going to say these are blood hounds or not tracking dogs, but I could not find that last spot of blood. So I put the dogs out and Bella, she's really good at just filtering through the woods. And when she finds a, a spot of blood, she'll stop there. And our last spot of blood until we found the next one that Bella tracked was probably what a hundred yards through the timber mm -hmm. and it's thick and Bella went to a spot and I went there and there were several drops and actually Gemma yeah Gemma then Gemma got on helped. the trail and took off running didn't she yeah and I thought she might have been after armadillo so I kind of went ahead and told them to stay back but, to mark the blood and guess what Gemma found started barking. yeah Gemma started barking and found your buck huh uh huh why don't you hold him up and show everybody. Well, Emily, what do you think? It's a nice eight point. It is. It's a good deer. I'm excited. I'm glad we found him. I mean, we're probably, what, 200 yards from our blood trail or from where you shot him yeah. through the solid timber. And the funny part is yeah, he came down right there is where DJ and Houston drove through. He got to the little meadow. And he's almost 20 yards from that field. So the 2020 youth rifle season is... A huge success. Houston harvested his first deer last night and then Emily was able to come out this morning and get this really nice eight point and uh, we couldn't have done it without the assistance of our, <laughs> Dogs. our our pups you know Bella and Gemma helped us find this deer I don't I, don't, I mean we might have found him eventually but it would have taken us all day and maybe longer we might have had to wait until the buzzards found him yeah. but uh, I'm happy for you I'm excited Emily broke her streak of <laughs> dropping the deer in his track so this is the first one we've actually had to really track that emily has shot but yeah. either way we've got our got our deer down got houston's deer he was field dressed and hanging it was nice and cold last night so we got to get to the house get this guy all cleaned up and get this meat in the freezer yeah. i'm excited emily same you happy mm -hmm. do you think it. hang on big question do you think you beat nick or did nick, no. nick beat you he definitely beat me but mm. I beat him every other year, so... Okay. The taste of defeat is bitter, isn't it? I still have Caden to beat. <laughs> Alright, let's go get this guy cleaned up and put in the freezer. That pit boss is rolling smoke right now. We're getting her warmed up and we're gonna cook up a little bit of these deer that my kids have harvested over the last couple days. Had a nice cold front come in this morning. It was chilly, it's down in the 40s. But I took the inner tenderloins out of both of those deer. So we're not talking about the back strap. These are the inside tenderloin after you remove all the guts right up next to the hips is two little inner tenderloins. Now on a deer, these little tenderloins are pretty small. But I think we're going to wrap a couple of them up in bacon, throw them on the pit boss and grill them up because deer meat has very little fat. So we're going to wrap it in bacon so we don't dry them out. And then I may slice a couple up and fry them for the kids as a little appetizer. Uh, the other day I told you guys we were waiting on a package in the mail from Florida's Finest Foods with a bunch of Everglades seasonings and we used that uh, fry mix on our fish. I think I may do a little bit of a flour and Everglades fry mix and fry some of these deer tenderloins up. But uh, let me go show you what all Florida's finest food sent us <laughs> just from talking about Everglades fish fry mix one day. So check this out. Now Florida's finest foods is the Amazon distributor for Everglades seasoning and they hooked us up with all kinds of Everglades. That one's a, a, a barbecue rub and every seasoning that they make, I think. There's some cactus dust, some fish and chicken. This one I've never seen before. Gourmet mopping barbecue sauce. But here's what I'm excited about. The Everglades pre-seasoned all-purpose breader. 
Now typically this isn't what you would fry like deer in, but I think if we add some flour to it, do a little egg wash first, might be pretty good. So these are the two inner tenderloins out of Emily's deer. The ones out of Houston's are just a little bit smaller. I think we're gonna batter those and fry them up. But these are ready to go on the grill. We're not smoking them. I'm gonna cook them at about 300 degrees. And I'll put the probes in there. Probably cook them to about a medium rare. Cause like I said with deer, there's not a lot of fat on it. You do not want to overcook it. But we let them marinate in the refrigerator for about 24 hours, sprinkle a little cactus dust, some Everglades cactus dust on them, wrapped them in bacon, and they should be extremely delicious in about 20 minutes. So I got my little venison tenderloin appetizer all whipped up and I've got a few extra taste testers here, but I think it's only smart, it's only wise to let my wife be the first taste tester because she's not typically a fan of deer meat. But I bet she is of this. All right, mom. Mm, I need ketchup. First bite's on you. I want you to try it without ketchup because I want you to actually tell me what it tastes like. Is that my deer? Gonna, yes, sir. I'm gonna pretend like it's fish. Pretend like it's fish. Dang it. Dang it. She said, dang it. <laughs> it's actually not bad. It's actually really good because I snuck one while ago. It is really good. Crap. You know what the difference is? I'm going to tell you part of the difference. Houston killed a one-year-old buck that's nice and tender. Yes. And you're used to eating Emily's <laughs> big granddaddies. <laughs> yeah, this is very tender. All right, Emily. Mm. You're next. On a crispy. Crispy. Okay. It may be hot. Don't put it back on the plate. Come on, girl. That's good. They don't taste like deer. That's right. It's not gamey at all. That's right. Those inner tenderloins are super tender. Yeah. And uh, that Everglades fry mix is really good. It's really good on there. Mm -hmm. So I mixed up the Everglades fry mix and flour, kind of 50 50. Did that egg wash. It's really good. It's delicious. There you go. Hey, Jacoby. Yeah. Who's that girl? My sister. Woo-wee! Ava's got wonderful hairdo this morning. All right, fellas, come in the kitchen. Y'all got to try this. This is Houston's first deer. I haven't tasted deer in a long time. Not bad at all. All right, Kobe, with the gimp arm. Let's see it. Mmm. Mmm. No response. We're waiting on Jacobus. It's really good. You like it? Yeah. It's good stuff, isn't it? I bet it doesn't last long around here. According to my uh, meat probes, our temperature is 149, 147 on our two tenderloins out here on the pit boss grill. Now, a bacon may not quite be 
crispy just yet, but I don't want to overcook the actual deer meat, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these off and let them rest. That was some, some extra thick bacon, so it's alright. We, we'll make it work. I mean, it's cooked. The bacon's cooked by all means. It's just not exactly crispy, so. Hope it's done. Oh, yeah. All right there, Miss Work From Home Mom. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's probably not gonna be your favorite over the fried, but I bet it's still good. Pretty sure that's a hair. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That sounds like a good sign. It is very good. Huh. It's a top rice. Hmm. Hmm. It needs, to know. it needs to be on a skewer with some onions and bell peppers. And, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Make it make it a shish kebab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be perfect. All right, boys. Hey, Dad. Y'all got to try this. You got your fire okay. going yet? No, we can't get it. I'll help you in just a minute. All right, um, boys. I'm, I think I'm going to start with the bacon. You're supposed to be eating the deer. Why don't you eat the deer first? All right, Cobe, you get over here. Y'all tell me what you think. Mmm, mmm. That's good. Mm. Is it worth having? Good stuff? Mm-hmm. All right, sis. Since this is the tenderloins from your deer that you shot, what are you gonna do it here? Just get one of the little skinny pieces first. Where? Oh. Yeah. Holy moly. That does not taste like deer. Really? Mm hmm. Hmm. It's really good. I must be a pretty good deer chef. Mm hmm. It is better than your past work, I will say that. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you bet. Appreciate that. Uh -huh. So, since everybody scarfed down all of my, my fried tenderloin, let's do a little taste test. That's better than the fried. Okay. I was wrong. Man, that's amazing. There is zero hint of a game flavor. Let me show you what I marinated this stuff in real quick. Because my wife thinks that's what made the difference. Now, the fried deer meat was amazing. But I think cooked on that pellet grill to 145, 147 degrees, that deer meat there on that tenderloin is so tender. And this was sent to us by a subscriber quite a while back, but we hadn't used it on the, on the channel at all. But it's called uh, Original State Fair Speedy Sauce, or Spidey Sauce. I'm not sure. But I marinated it in this for about 24 hours. Put a little bit of that Everglades cactus dust on there, and uh, Emily says it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Better than the fried. Better than the fried. Which was your favorite? Mmm. -hmm. I don't know. I'm really torn. I'm just going to go straight even. Hey. A tie. Give me some knuckles. Because that means I cooked deer meat two different ways and you loved it. That is true. It is true. No more big old bucks for you. <laughs> From now on, you got to shoot a little small, one-year-old, 4.6 point. I don't think we should go that far. Really? No. All right, then. So the 2020 youth rifle season here in Oklahoma was in extreme success i couldn't be more proud and happy for both of my kids but i'm telling you what that tenderloin that i just cooked over here on that pellet grill i i'm gonna just say that was the best deer i have ever cooked in my life it's so tender so juicy and i don't know if it was the marinade the cactus dust or what it was but I will leave a link. Neither one of the neither one of those companies are sponsoring us in any way. But I'll leave a link in the description box to the I think it's Spidey's marinade. We marinated that meat for 24 hours, and I'm sure it was going to be pretty tender anyways on that young buck. But uh, it was good. It was really really good. And that Everglades cactus dust gave it a nice little kick. So my wife even agreed that was the best deer meat I've ever cooked. And that's, a, that's saying a lot coming from her because she typically does not like the taste of deer. 
So if that's any indication of how the rest of Houston's deer and Emily's deer are going to taste, uh, we're going to be eating good this winter. So, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.